Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hananiga High School. Today we'll be starting our discussion of Chapter 17, which is really just additional aqueous equilibrium situation. This is kind of a cleanup chapter where we look at the different types of equilibrium that we haven't really discussed in the last few chapters. You'll notice the math for what we're doing in this chapter should look familiar because these are ideas related to equilibrium, and we've been working on this for three chapters now. Common ion effect is really what we're going to be looking at today in section 17.1. So let's consider a solution of acetic acid. If you throw acetic acid in water, it ionizes to make H3O plus, because it's an acid, and CH3COO minus, which is the acetate anion. Now, as a weak acid, it only partially ionizes, so we end up with an equilibrium system where we have created H3O plus, which means we have increased the acidity or decreased the pH of the solution. Now, if acetate ion is added, so let's say we add in sodium acetate to this solution. So we've got a system at equilibrium with acetic acid, and we throw in some acetate like sodium acetate. Now, as an equilibrium system, when we add something on the product side, that's going to increase the reverse rate, which is going to shift equilibrium to the left. So adding the anion acetate will cause an equilibrium shift to the left. Now, the way the book refers to this common ion effect idea is that a weak electrolyte will ionize less when a strong electrolyte with a common ion is added to the solution. So going back to our reaction, what this basically means is we have a weak electrolyte that is our weak acid. So this is a weak acid here, and that's acetic acid. If we add a strong electrolyte, basically a, an ionic salt that's water-soluble, and that adds more of this, that's going to cause the uh, weak acid to ionize less. Because when we add this, its concentration increases. That shifts equilibrium to the left, which increases the concentration of our weak acid, which basically means less of an ionized. So if something like sodium acetate is, add, is, is added, acetic acid will actually ionize less. Now, what will this do to the pH of the system? Well, if we shift equilibrium to the left, remember, that means this concentration is going to be going down. Well, since that is measured by pH and lowering the pH would be increasing acidity, if we're lowering the amount of H3O+, plus, we're going to decrease the acidity. So that would cause our pH to rise. So in this particular reaction, because it's an acid reaction, when we add a common ion, a conjugate, a strong, um, uh, to specifically say this, we have a weak acid. If we add a common ion that is the conjugate of that weak acid, that's going to cause it to dissolve less, to ionize less, to whatever less. So this is an example of a common ion situation when we're looking at what adding the conjugate of our weak acid actually does to our percent ionization. It's going to end up lowering it if it doesn't ionize as much. And that's going to end up raising our pH. Now here's a typical common ion effect problem. This should look familiar because back in chapter 16 in our FRQ review, we did a problem that looked very much like this. So calculate the fluoride ion concentration and pH of a solution that is 0 0.20 molar in HF, so we have hydrofluoric acid, and we're adding to it the strong electrolyte, HCl, which is going to contribute this species. If HCl is a strong electrolyte, it's going to give us H plus and Cl minus. Well, the common ion here would be the H plus concentration. Now, to start with in the problem, you need to take a look at the reaction uh, for what we're dealing with. In this case, it's the weak acid reaction of hydrofluoric acid. So our HF react with water makes H3O plus and F minus. And this would be the Ka for that reaction. Notice since we made H3O plus, we have a Ka value, not a Kv value. Next, we set up the equilibrium expression. Remember, you always do this, and you always do this in each of these problems. So write your reaction, and then write the K expression for that reaction. And you know that K is going to equal 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. So at equilibrium, your K value has to equal 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Remember, if we don't change temperature, that K is not going to be changing. So in this particular problem, because HCl is a strong acid and it's also going to be present, that means the initial H3O plus concentration is not going to be zero. Because remember, this is another way of looking at H plus. 
The Cl minus is just a spectator. That's not going to have any effect whatsoever on a reaction here. But in this particular case, contributing H plus means this concentration at the beginning is not zero. Now, since we have no F minus at the beginning, that means we have to be shifting to the right as we get to equilibrium. That means this is going to be a plus X and this is going to be a plus x, and this is going to be a minus x. Now when we add our two together to get our equilibrium with respect to x, we're going to get 0 0.20 minus x and 0 0.10 plus x. And remember, what we always do with these, because we're going to assume this x is small in relationship to the value it's with, we're going to neglect x. Just like last chapter, we're doing the same exact thing here. Remember I mentioned the math that we're doing in this chapter is no different from what we've been doing over the past couple of chapters. So what we're going to do is assume that it's small and neglect both of those x. Why? Think about it. Remember what we talked about last chapter? Because it simplifies the math and we can avoid the quadratic. So in this particular case instead of 0 0.10 minus x and 0 0.20 minus x, if we neglect x that simplifies to this equation, which equals our same old k value we can now solve for x. In this particular case, x ends up equaling 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3. So therefore, f minus, which is one of our, remember, H3O plus um, had uh, some H plus added in there, so it was not 0. So x in this case actually just equaled the f minus concentration, which is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3. Now, H3O plus, remember, was 0.1 plus x, and that would be 0.1 plus 1.4 times 10 to the 3. It's such a small value, it rounds out. Neglecting x was valid in this particular case. So that's going to be the concentration of our H3O plus. And when you take the negative log of that, you'll get your value for pH. So the concentration of S minus at equilibrium is going to be 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3. And the pH at equilibrium is 1.00. Remember, two sig figs, two decimal places is a p-value. And that ends our first set of notes over chapter 17.